Well, hi to everyone uh, on this Sunday morning. Um, it feels with the George Muller story like we've been all been on a journey together. I had a child this week ask me, um, is this a true story? When I suggested we actually go and see the orphanages, I'd like to let all the children know, yes, amazing, this is a true story. And after the message today, we've got a really wonderful little interview that Nick does um, with one of the trustees of the George Muller Foundation. Um, he spoke with us this week and we heard that that work is still going on. In fact, so many children today are being helped through that same foundation that they're helping more children now than were ever helped during George Muller's life, which is amazing. Uh, worldwide, they gave out 1.3 million was given out to work uh, across the world in various parts uh, where they that foundation, that work is still going on. And I love that, um, that I, I like to think of the Victorian maid who gave her little shilling, which is perhaps all she had, gave it to George Muller in 1860 for the children. And that that little shilling um, is still is still going, is still being used. Um, so that's a, that's an amazing thought. So let's just quickly go back to the beginning of the story. Do you remember? Incredibly, George Muller was this wild youth who uh, didn't care about people and led a sort of wasteful life. Do you remember we talked about his heart being like a cold heart? Didn't care about God, didn't care about people. And then amazingly, he goes to that prayer meeting, meets these Christians, and something begins to happen, and God sets his heart on fire. Um, and he has a great desire that God would use his life um, for something useful. And the bit of the story that we've got to George Muller is now an old man. I love this picture of him. Uh, he's known throughout the Christian world, particularly for uh, a lot of different things, but in particular for this amazing work that happened in, just on the outskirts of Bristol on Ashley Down. And we've got some fantastic pictures, which we're going to show you now um of the of the of the children and of the orphanages so the first one we've got is of some of the girls walking this is possibly would have been taken in at the time when george muller was alive um outside one of the orphan houses you can see how huge these orphan houses were got a fantastic one i love this of the boys in the gym um, Muller was ahead of his time in the way he looked after children. He believed that they needed exercise, they needed playtime, um, as well as education. And he was very into fitness um, and encouraged them, uh, both indoors and outdoors, to take exercise. There's a wonderful one of the laundry. Um, they, in all the pictures, you can see the children are very clean. Their clothes are very clean. There was a huge amount of laundry going on. No washing machines in those days. So, so there would have been people working so hard on that. Got a lovely one of some of the boys playing football um, outside one of the orphan houses. Another one of the children on slides and swings uh, all playing out. Uh, there's this very sweet one of the older girls looking after some of the younger ones, which was very much how they run the orphanages. Um, and then there's a lovely one of them, some of the boys, I think, outside helping look after chickens. Uh, we know they grew vegetables. I think the next one's of um, the potato harvest. Uh, as they collected in the potatoes from the fields where they grew the grew the vegetables um there's uh, th this one is a <laughs> this is so victorian it's the um it's just a great picture of the sunday school outing where they're all going off across to the hill that was nearby the hills called Purr down and uh, they took them once a year on this very special trip they must have had a picnic and everything up there there's a lovely one of the christmas tree george muller loved christmas they really celebrated it with the children Another one of them, I think this is, the, is of the dining hall. Um, some of the, a picture of some of them playing a sort of ring a ring of roses type game um, in their playtime. As a great one, I like this, of the boys looking a bit reluctant, some of the younger boys at their studies because they had proper school days. Another one, that, one of them looking slightly happier where they're playing uh, during their playtime, some of the boys. Then there's a great one of some kind of vehicle. I think this was linked with the, the Sunday school outing and all the some of the helpers and the older people and the some of the, the leaders all went off in this great big car. I don't know if you could call it a car, minibus, open top minibus to purr down. Um, there's another one of the boys uh, planting some of the vegetables. Another lovely one of um, some of the leaders here sitting around the tables. This was at Christmas. You can see they're celebrating and it says on the wall, unto us a child is born. And 
in, in lots of the pictures you can see they began to paint on the walls they put up sayings and inspirational quotes for the children and verses um, all, all around them I thought that was really wonderful and then there's one of the younger children here um, all together you can see how well they're cared for and um, apparently Charles Dickens heard about the work and uh, he went to see it for himself and he went and saw the orphans um, and was was incredibly impressed with the care that they were being given. It was so different from what was going on in the workhouses and the places he'd known. And so now in the story, Muller is an old man. He's in his 80s. Um, and in 1890, um, he loses his daughter. Here's a picture of his daughter, Lydia, with her husband, James. Um, and he she, she dies age 58, and he outlives her. Um, they found among her possessions when she died a little her, her favourite verse of her favourite hymn and it said these words and both Muller and her, her, her husband loved this when they found it. It says, I have seen the face of Jesus. Tell me not of aught, anything beside. I have heard the voice of Jesus and my soul is satisfied. So he lost her and then four years later he loses his second wife. He's now 89. Again he takes the funeral um, and now he's, he's alone but he's not alone. He's moved into orphan house number two. I think this is just great that he, in the end he just moves into the orphanage with the children. So this is a picture of his study in the orphan house um, and he's there in orphan house number two and he must have looked back over his life and thought I can hardly believe uh, what God has done, that a life that started off uh, so wasteful and empty became so full of purpose and such a source of blessing to other people. And then on the night of March the 9th, 1898, he goes to the evening prayer meeting. He gives out the hymn, they sing and they pray. And at the end, he says to someone something they'd never heard him say before. He said, I'm tired, I'm weary. And it was as if God heard those words. It was as if I kind of imagined that God said, that's it. You've done it. You've run your race. You've finished the course. Um, and God that night uh, took him. And the following morning when they came to bring him a cup of tea, they found he had died in the night. It was March the 10th. He was 92 years old. Amazing. What a life. Let me just read out a summary of some of the figures involved. Um, he had helped over 10,000 orphans, first in Wilson Street um, and then in these incredible orphanages that were built up on Ashley Down. He'd founded 117 schools which educated 120,000 children. Hundreds of thousands of tracts, gospel tracts and Bibles had been sent out across the world. He travelled 200,000 miles to 30 countries, speaking to approximately 3 million people. You can see some of those figures on that map that we've got here. He pastored a thriving church and, and further congregations in Bristol. He supported missionaries worldwide and was instrumental um, in triggering Hudson Taylor to set up the China Inland Mission. He was also instrumental in the start of the 1859 revival through his narrative reaching those young men in Ireland who began to pray. All of this he did with no money of his own. Um, he just did it through prayer uh, and through trust in God. And so on the Monday, he had died on the Thursday and on the following Monday, March the 14th, 1898, um, his funeral is held. The initial service was held in the orphan house number three, uh, where over a thousand children were present. Um, it's said that many of the children wept and then the adults began to cry because they were so moved by the tears of the children. Um, it said on his coffin, George Muller fell asleep March the 10th, 1898, in his 93rd year. Then there was a funeral procession from the orphanage through the town, through the city, uh, to Bethesda Chapel. They said there'd never been a day like it in Bristol. They closed many of the factories, many of the offices were closed so that the people could come. Large parts of the city came to a standstill. It was a huge procession with dozens of vehicles and hundreds of children walking behind. They said that many of those who lined the streets were adults who'd been rescued by Muller as children. Uh, there were even children, there were even adults there who had been children in the Wilson Street 
um, orphanages. And the life of this extraordinary man drew to a close. Uh, we've got a brief clip of what that day, uh, which shows pictures from that day. The following Monday was a day the like of which Bristol had never seen. Businesses and factories closed. The city came to a halt as thousands of people lined the streets to pay their last respects to a German immigrant who had won their hearts and, as his obituary in Britain's Daily Telegraph said, had robbed the cruel streets of thousands of victims, the jails of thousands of felons, the workhouses of thousands of helpless waifs. The Bristol Times said that he was raised up for the purpose of showing that the age of miracles is not past and rebuking the sceptical tendencies of the time. Amazing. Amazing. So we're just going to pray. Uh, Lord God, we, we worship you today from our hearts and we thank you for this wonderful story uh, that inspires us. And Lord, we thank you for the life of George Muller. And we know that uh, he could only do great things because he had a great God, you, the living God. Um, and Father, we pray today, would you uh, do a work in our hearts, Lord? It all began in his heart in that prayer meeting. Father, would you do a work in our hearts, Lord? Would you melt our hearts where they're icy? Lord, would you warm up our hearts where they're lukewarm? And would you put some of this fire, this fire of the Holy Spirit, um, this desire to serve you and for our lives to be useful, uh, would you put more of that in our hearts, Lord, we pray. Thank you for listening. Um, and I'm now handing over to Nick.